Hey guys, thanks my name here. Forgot to put my mic on, just gonna do that now. Um, I got a question on YouTube from a user called Dusky Grass. Um, asking how to, well, some tips for using the smart mesh um, to bend an arm uh, like the crocodile um, character that comes with Moho 12. Um, but this arm is a little bit more complex, I guess, um, although it doesn't have um, much surface detail. Um, the shape of it, we're going to need to um, just refine a little bit as we bend it. So um, I've just taken an arm off Google. I've put it under a bone layer and added some bones. Um, I'm just going to add some points for the mesh. Um, and this, uh, this is how I like to um, draw lines in uh, Moho. Um, it's actually much quicker than using Illustrator in that way um, because I can just draw the line and then just pull and correct it without having to do too much more. Um, so the most important thing I think with mesh, um, with warp mesh, what's it called? Uh, smart warp. <laughs> is um, is to try and use as fewer points as possible uh, to do what you're trying to do because that makes it easier for you to move the lines around. Um, on the flip side of that, obviously, um, the detail will get lost uh, if you're sort of squishing big triangles around. They seem to kind of squish right on the um, surface. So we'll... Uh, we'll add points where we need them basically. So let me just use my usual trick, which I like doing. Um, so I've created a reference layer um, and I'm going to, for now, just triangulate that layer. Um, now you see all these extra triangles here. They're not really necessary. And if I filled the shape before I did that, then you wouldn't see them, but it doesn't matter. They're not gonna do any harm. Um, oh no, in fact, all right, let me show you how, again, quickly to do this. Um, I'm going to fill the original layer's shape. Then I'm going to right click and update layer reference and replace the mitch. <laughs> I can never say that. Mishmashed, mishmashed vectors. Um, and then I'm going to do that again. I'm going to go to draw, triangulate. And now you see that they're not triangulated outside, they're triangulated nicely, but um, okay, I've already set, what you might find is that don't render this layer isn't automatically set on the original layer. So I've just set that um, myself so that this black outline doesn't get rendered. Um, and now every time I can add more to this, onto the original layer. I'll resync it. You'll see me do that later. Um, so I'm going to just do a bend and see where we are. So I can see here the joint is pretty funky. Um, so I'm going to start off just by doing some basic uh, manipulation, but I forgot a very important thing, which is to actually assign the layer to the arm now that I've triangulated it so let me do that now and there we go now we've got a bit of bit of movement here so oops I'm on the wrong tool um, now you'll see that it it doesn't do a bad job even with one point but you start to see little funny wobbles here and there and I want to create an elbow which actually this doesn't look too bad but again because I'm moving this the more I move it and because there's so few triangles, it's actually pulling from this area. I was about to point to it, but you obviously can't see my fingers or the screen, so that's not much use. Um, so what we've got as a basic point is here, which actually isn't too bad. Okay, so let's continue and bend it even further. I'm going to rotate this all the way over here. Now, you'll start seeing here that because there's only one point and very you know, that we need more points in order to articulate this shape a bit more. Um, this is always going to be triangular here and here. So um, even though now we can, 
there's a couple of things. You can either sort of squish all the points up like this, uh, which kind of looks okay as well, or um, because one is always going to be in front of the other, we can do that and um, cross them over so they're overlapping. Now, there, there's a funky thing here where certain shapes are in front or behind what they should be. What I want is the, the forearm to be on top of the back arm all the time. So I'm going to go back here. Um, I'll need to do this again in a minute, so I'll not do that right now. What I'll do is I'll add some points. So I've gone to the original layer. I'm going to add some points so I can articulate the elbow. Um, let me just select these two points so I know which ones they are. Although I'll need to... Um, so I need a, a few more points in here and I'll probably add a couple here too. Let me put two there and two here. Um, let's add a couple there. And that's not acting too badly, so maybe I'll leave that as it is. Um, so now you see that there's points here, but they're not on the second layer. Um, what I'm going to do is update and replace, um, and that untriangulates it. Then I re-triangulate it, and it should be back to where it was. Except for the points that I've added, um, now it's it. You see more triangles. Um, they haven't necessarily bit well. I mean, it's done what it can about moving those points um, where possible. But um, sometimes you'll find that if you add points, they'll stay still um, off frame zero where you've already got animation. So you're going to need to fix those manually. Um, but you know, it's all part of the part of the thing. So. Let me go back here. What I'm going to do is do what I was going to do before, which is select all of the forearm triangles. Uh, I'm doing that by holding shift and dragging over the triangles here. And now this is maybe a problem. This is why this is a problem. There's a triangle going right over the joint. Um, so I'm never going to be able to properly um, correct that. So what I'm going to do, well, in fact, let me do that first. So I'm going to press shift and up. That means that these are always going to be above any of the shapes that are below. Um, and I'm also going to just correct um, that point so that this line, this join line here, um, is going across the joint. And I'll probably need to update this again and then triangulate it. Okay, so now we've got a line going right across the joint, so that should hopefully act a little bit better. Um, so let's go here. Now, because we've got extra points, they've kind of gone rounded, um, so we can just correct those if we want. Um, and so let's have a look here how that moves along there. Okay, so you just continue doing this. That's not the elbow yet, so this is a little bit strange. You continue doing that until you're happy with the movement. Because um, what I can do after, which I'll show in a sec. Let me go here. So see, this is a little bit funky here. I'm, I should have added, I should add really more points, but it's already eight minutes and you kind of get the idea. It's just kind of like, you, you, you know, you have to, um, do this as you're correcting it. Now that you might think, oh, this is a bit weird because he's just doing it on the main line. But what I'm going to do is in a second, I'm going to copy this over to um, to a, a smart bone. Um, and that will mean that this action is actually reusable. Now you see, we're still getting a lot of like really very geometric action here. Um, so it's better to split that curve even further and do some more fixing because you see it's got a bit of a funny elbow. Um, but it really depends on the amount of detail you have on your arm um, before you do that. Let's see here. I mean, it does not looking too bad. So I'm just going to quickly show you how to copy this over. Let's say here I, I want a little bit less here. And then let's say I want to make the bicep grow a little bit. Oop. Now let's delete that, and I'll delete those. 
so the bicep is growing here I'm just going to grab these points here and move them a little bit okay I mean it's starting to look a bit weird but um, you'll get the idea uh, of th this is basically the process and what we'll do here is I'll open the actions palette um, I need to create a new bone, which I'm going to use as the smart bone for the... Oh, in fact, no, I'm not. I'm going to just put it on this forearm, so whenever the forearm bends. Um, so it's called B2 at the moment. I could rename it, but I'm not going to bother. I click on that. That already has B2 in it. Click on that. And then what I want to do is I want to copy the main line into the sub layer, uh, which... We'll just copy everything that we've just done. So I click on the main line and then I click on this clone thing. So now we've got exactly the same action that we had before. And I can correct things in here too. Uh, let's see. So you see where there's like weird sort of... What, what you want to do is kind of just make things um, far enough apart that they're not sort of squishing up to look really weird now I need some extra points in here and if I wanted to I could you know add another line down the center if I wanted to change where that shine moves um, without changing the outer line but this is fine for now so now I've got this that will cover the action from open to this closed and I'll go back to the main line if I delete all animation from the file which I will do. Where's it gone? I've gone. I've gone crazy. Here we go. Clear animation from document. Now you see that the arm's not moving. But now, if I was to just rotate this bone, we've got the corrected action. And from now on, I can just continue. I mean, yeah, we didn't fix it quite that far. But I can just continue to use this as a normal smart bone. So I th hope that was helpful. It's 12 minutes, a bit long. Sorry about that. Um, and if you have any more specific questions, um, just let me know and I'll make another video, hopefully. All right. This is Funks, my name, signing out.